Alrighty, what is going on today, guys? I hope you enjoyed that intro, put quite a bit of work into it. Um, you know, it was just something really fun. I really, I'm an avid fan of horror movies. And, you know, just wanted to play up the spookier side of owning reptiles and stuff like that. Um, but, honestly, it's also a play on everything that's going on in the world. Everybody's freaking out, and I just want to basically show a more fun side of everything and not I don't want our channel to be something people have to come freak out about this and that so with that being said today we are doing Izanami's enclosure build as you can see right now what I'm doing is I'm spraying down the great stuff gaps and cracks expanding foam and I basically sprayed a whole layer down initially and then I start layering it up um, almost into formations give myself a general idea of what I wanted to do this part's really fun because you can play around with it the gaps and cracks expanding foam only sprays for like maybe three minutes but um, three cans was more than enough to do a three foot by two foot enclosure so it, it definitely worked out it was definitely very fun um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and let's go on to the next step. Alrighty, and after uh, we got that base layer of foam down, basically what I did was I started thinking about my rock formations. What did I want to do? How many rocks I want to have? Did I want to put climbing ledges? What did I want this to overall look like? So what I wanted was I ended up wanting to go with a really Egyptian style, uh, kind of mountainous look with their black deserts and their almost white sand, orangish sand. Um, almost wanted to do sandstone, but I decided against that. But yeah, so it was just a lot of thought process, and this part's really fun because you can just play with it so much. There's there's an endless amount of possibilities. You can just keep foaming up. If you've got more foam, you can always keep going. Uh, but I basically worked with it into a point where I realized I wanted climbing ledges, I wanted rocks to stick out, and I wanted some deep like crevices in those rocks. So that's why I did spray it so deep. And you can actually see the finished product right about and here. So this is what it ended up looking like uh, after it cured. It was a lot of fun to do. But now, as you see, we're getting onto the carving portion. Now to the left of me, you can see the part I had already carved. And it was, um, I did that one first off camera because I wanted to s just kind of get a feel of what I was doing. I've never carved foam before, so that's why I just did that one off camera. But this one I did for you guys on camera. Um, there is something I want to state to you guys though. Please, please, please do not replicate what I'm, how I'm cutting this in this video. Please never cut towards your hands. It's a very unsafe practice. I've been using knives my whole life, um, and I'm very confident in my abilities, but all it takes is one slip, and boom, you have a big old gash in your hand. You need to get stitches. So please, please, please just don't do what I do and cut towards your hand. I know it's terribly stupid, but like I said, I've been doing it for so long, I'm very confident, but it, all it takes is one time, guys. One time. Alright guys, so after I got all the sides basically uh, carved down flush with each other, that's when I started coming in and actually carving out the portions I wanted to. Now, mind you, they do recommend that you use a serrated blade, something like a coping saw, in order to do this. Um, I did have other tools. I did have serrated blades. Um, but I just found this straight, ed this straight edge knife worked best for me. It's a super sharp knife, and it just it did work best for me for what I was doing. Um, it might be different for you guys. But so you're going to just go ahead and see a lot of the carving process. I am not going to sit here and talk to you guys this whole time because I doubt you want to hear my voice all that time. But so just go ahead, enjoy watching me carve out, watch it come to pieces. As you see right now, I'm actually planning out and marking out where my ledge is going to go. You can see the ledge on the left piece, on the right piece. I'm just trying to plan out my ledge and my rock formations right there. But other than that, um, yeah, so... I'm going to go ahead and just let you guys enjoy watching me carve, watch this take shape and form, and I'll get back to you guys as soon as it's done.
All right, guys. So one thing I did want to point out is that on the piece you see sitting up against the couch, how I have that hole back there, I actually turned that into a burrow hole. So that was super cool. Um, I made the ledge, and then there's a big air pocket right there that was like screwed. I just carved it out, and I made it into a big old uh, just like little hide hole. Even though he has not used it yet, but hey. So, but the rest of what I'm doing here is I'm just putting the finishing touches on everything, and now you get to see the actual finished piece at least for the most part it's finished um so this is kind of what i it looked like when i was done but i did end up changing a couple more things adding a couple more crevices i really enjoyed the way it looked when it came out though all right guys and now on to the next step so from there i started to silicone and I just use 100% silicone. You can find it basically anywhere. Um, I basically what I did was I followed a pretty popular YouTuber to a T for what I was doing. Um, I wanted to do something because I, I watched a lot of his videos. And so, yeah, shout out to Serpa Design. I love your videos, man. And I will honestly continue to watch them. And thank you for the inspiration for this build. But you can see, I'm just siliconing. I'm actually trying to fill in a couple of the holes that are in there that I didn't want. Um, but, yeah, so it, this was probably one of the most time-consuming portions of it all. It was very difficult to cover the whole thing in silicone. It, But, whatever. It was a lot of fun. So, once I am done with the silicone, I start actually spreading it around. And once you spread it around, you actually get a feel of like, wow, the silicone does not go as far as you thought it would. I used, I think, a whole canister of silicone on just the one piece. Um, but yeah, so you start spreading it around, and then after you're done spreading it around, you can actually go ahead and start throwing some sand on it. So I started off with the black sand, right? And that's because I wanted that to pop. I wanted that to be kind of hidden, and I want the, you know... I just, I want it to be different textures, stuff like that. I tried to add a lot of the black sand into the crevices to add shadow effects, stuff like that. I uh, just really just thought all around about it. Now, you want to push the sand into the silicone so it sticks. It will fall right off if you don't do that. But so, yeah, I came in with the white sand. Now, I'm flipping it over, getting all the excess stuff off. I just want to see what it looked like, so I wanted to get all the excess sand off. Um, and just see kind of what it was looking like and see what I could do further see where I needed to add more silicone like you see me doing and yeah, Add more sand Alrighty, and from this first piece, I did go on to the second piece right now, and so I did basically the same exact thing on this piece, so I, you're not going to get to see as much of this one, but yeah, it was basically the same exact thing. What I did do was I went into that little hole that was a big old pain to get a bunch of silicone and stuff into, um, but yeah, like I said, I'm going to cut a whole bunch of this out just because it is literally the same exact process as you guys just saw, but I felt it was necessary to say that this piece was a little bit harder than the first one. Alright guys, and from there, we started the actual enclosure build. My good buddy was actually with me uh, for this portion. He wasn't recording or anything, but he was there just to help me with the aesthetic look of it. So what I did was I had to squeeze this one in there, try to get it all pushed back as far as I could, and see how it fit. The second piece was a little bit harder to put in. I did not account for the actual light being in there, because the first time I put them in, the light wasn't in there. So... Yeah, it was um, it was a lot of fun, and I finally got it in there, and I really liked the way it looked. So from there, basically what I was going to do is I was going to come in, and I basically went through and I vacuumed up all the excess sand, all the excess stuff. I did vacuum off the actual boards after I was done with them, uh, after done sanding them and stuff like that, and I let them cure for 24 hours. I did vacuum off all the excess, but of course there's always going to be a little bit of excess left. 
So, yeah, that was a really fun portion. I was really happy with the way they fit. Um, I did run into some problems with one of the pieces, but other than that, they fit very well, very natural. I was trying to see if that one plant would fit there, but it didn't, so it's, it is what it is, you know? Alright guys, so I got the enclosure all decorated. I'm going to go and pull these Nami out of here. Now don't mind that's bare. I used a couple of her uh, decorations from in here because obviously she's no longer going to be in here. So just make sure she's not going to get angry at me. Come on. Awesome. So yep, here is Izanami. It looks like she's about to go into a shed. But yeah. I love her and I've been wanting to do this for her for such a long time. And now I finally am able to get, whoa, what, what? Um, finally was able to get her into a new home. Um, it's been, it's been a half a week since I got the enclosure and finally she's able to go into it. So let's take a look at it. Um, so yeah, let's take a look at the enclosure. So I think it turned out pretty nicely. It's got a lot of spots to hide, a lot of things to do in there. So yeah, let's see how she likes it. I love watching snakes explore new surroundings. She looks so small in this enclosure. She does, man. That's tiring. Big enclosure for her. I'm saying she'll be pretty happy with it, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I just love watching them uh, explore. So I do need to get some water in here for her. But all right, guys, so that is basically it. This was Izanami's enclosure build. You get to see a little bit of B-roll of everything. Um, and yeah, I want to thank you guys so much for taking the time to click on this video, watch it. Please go ahead, subscribe, like, comment, do all those things that YouTubers say for us, and we will absolutely appreciate it. We are planning on a big old giveaway at this exact moment. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll be posting up about that giveaway very soon. We are still trying to decide on what to give away, but we are planning on one. Um, yeah, and once again, thank you guys so, so, so much. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day, and be safe out there. Uh, I don't know who's quarantined, who's not right now, but please just be safe out there. Have a good one. So that's all. This is her enclosure. This is her new home. She's gonna. Oh, look, she's already utilizing the climbing areas I made for her. You got a whole other side to explore. And she is a burrowing snake, so that's why a lot of the heavy stuff I actually buried down underneath of the substrate. Um, just that way, when she, if she burrows underneath the bed, she doesn't doesn't fall on or hurt or anything like that. Um, tomorrow is feeding day for her, so we'll see if she does eat. Um, she might not. It's not a problem. She can easily go two weeks without eating. But yeah.